Do you enjoy photographing the birds in your garden? It's a fun thing to do, especially during the current travel restrictions imposed by Covid. Although the images I'm showing on screen now are reasonable in themselves, they're cluttered with the bird feeder and they don't look as natural as they could. They can be improved upon with just a little modification and organisation of your photographic setup. By a few simple changes, it's possible to get photos like these on screen now, which in my opinion at least are much better. For example, there is no evidence of the bird feeders in the photographs and there is a nice diffuse background. In addition, the bird is on an attractive perch. All these factors combine to give an overall more pleasing result. So, if you want to take shots like this, keep watching and I will teach you my method. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk to you about how I photograph wild birds in my garden. What you see behind me is my bird feeder setup that I have and I run that through most of the winter feeding the birds that come into the garden and I got various different feeders containing sunflower seeds and also half coconut shells which are full of fat. And you can buy these online, they're relatively cheap and you can, they'll last you quite some time. What I tend to do is dismantle all of this and set up a perch which is much more natural looking than if you were photographing birds actually on the feeders themselves. I'll show you some uh, f photographs I took earlier on today with birds on the feeders, but the plan now is to remove all of these and introduce a more natural looking perch for the birds to perch on and giving a, a more pleasing result. So in order for me to do that I'll need to remove these and then I'm going to set up my portable hide. Now you don't need a portable hide as you hopefully can make out. The birds are actually coming to feed on these feeders even while I'm standing next to them. Um, but I'll do that anyway. I'll put my, my uh, portable garden hide up just to give a little bit of uh, sort of camouflage if you like from the uh, camera point of view. So this is the view from the hide showing the feeder with the coconut, half, half coconut shell upside down with some sunflower seeds at the bottom of that uh, pot and then the perch that I want the birds to be landing on which is here and there's probably about four inches, three inches difference in height so basically I'm going to get the perch, the, the branch here with all the lovely lichen on it but in my field of view I will not have the feeder at all so the idea is that the birds will come and perch on the branch on the twig here before going into the feeder and then the important thing is composition is everything so the important thing to avoid is if you see it in the back left hand corner on the top left hand corner I've uh, got my garden shed and I certainly don't want that as part of the the image so always look around the frame uh, before you press the button uh, the shutter button to make sure that you're not getting any got anything that you wouldn't want in the frame uh, in the frame okay so here's uh, a closer view of the feeding situation. This is the small feeding tray that I've got filled with some sunflower and then the upturned coconut with fat in it. Here's the perch that I'm hoping the birds will land on which is uh, rather attractive. It's, it's not just a plain per a perch. I managed to search around in the woodland behind my house and found one with nice bits of lichen on it which I'm hopeful that the birds will land on uh, waiting their turn to get at the feeder. So preparation is quite important in this and as I'm shooting from the off, off to the right in this direction I'm not getting any of the feed or the, the coconut or the seed in view everything will be above that above my hand so I'm getting the perch and the birds on the perch. So all I need to do now is to remove all the uh, other feeders that I don't want in shot to concentrate the bird activity where I want it. Well I'm nearly ready to go uh, but I thought I'd show you the equipment I'm going to use today. So I've got a, a Sony A9 uh, camera body, 24 megapixels, 20 frames a second, it's a mirrorless camera and I can have completely silent shooting at 20 frames per second which is a real uh, bonus for wildlife photography. I've got that uh, connected to a Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens. It's mounted on a Benro gimbal and uh, this is a brilliant gimbal which allows me effectively to move the camera in any direction by just using one finger. 
and it will just stay put where I leave it then. And that's a, a really good help for when you're doing any wildlife photography. I probably use a, a tripod and a, and a gimbal like this for about 90% of my uh, long lens work. And that's connected to the Gitzo tripod that I normally use, carbon fiber tripod. So that's the camera I'll be using. Um, the perch itself is just basically connected to, in this case, an old tripod. And I've just, just used a couple of cable ties, garden cable ties, to tie the perch, the twig, onto the tripod leg or the, the, the arm of the tripod. It's similar to a Benro tripod, this particular one, but any object will do that you can anchor the, the uh, perch to. And then it's just a question of aligning it just above the, the feed tray. Uh, so four or five inches above in this case. Now what I'm hoping for is I'll move these feeders away in a moment. So I'll just have this one left in the area for the birds to use. And the idea is that the birds will come in, land on the perch while they're waiting their turn to get into the feeding tray. It's always, always, always important to look at your background when you're photographing any wildlife. You do not want anything intrusive in the background. And I don't know if you can make out, but in the, in the background here, I've got a bit of blue plastic uh, th through the hedge of my garden, which is over some wood that's drying. And I certainly don't want that blue in the image. So composition is absolutely important and one of the most important aspects, in fact, of wildlife photography. So always bear in mind what you've got in the background before you start pressing the shutter button on the camera. So that's about it. So we'll get into the hide now, re remove all these feeders, get into the hide and get on with our photography. Well, um, I'm now sitting in my hide and you can see the bird activity here. It's just started raining and that's another virtue of being able to use a hide. You don't actually uh, have to suffer the rain yourself. So uh, you can see how frenetic the ac action is here. I'll just move the camera a little bit so you can see the perch that I'm using. Sometimes they'll land on it and others they won't. Depends. I mean there's one just landed on now too, <laughs> waiting their turn for the feeder. So that's what it's all about. I'll zoom out a little so you've got more of a, an idea. And by zooming out you can see where I've got a bit of blue plastic in my garden covering up some wood that's drying. Uh, and you can see now from the composition point of view it's not such a good image because that blue is creeping in and these are the sort of things that you need to be aware of uh, when you're taking your shots because the last thing you want to do is to come to the end of a shooting session and find that you've got objects in the frame that you don't really want. Oh, a great spotted woodpecker calling somewhere nearby now. It'd be nice if that came and landed on the perch. Whilst concentrating on taking still images of the birds in your garden, why not also have a go at some video photography, particularly using slow motion? It really does reveal interesting aspects of bird behaviour. For example here, the robin, picking up a piece of sunflower seed, then hopping back to the perch, turning round and looking for some more, whilst all the time the rain is pouring onto its back and you can see the raindrops bouncing up from the feathers every now and again. It really does add more to your portfolio. Okay, so now I'm back indoors at my computer looking at the images that I've taken in the garden. And I use a program called Photo Mechanic for quickly running through the uh, photographs that I've taken and I can uh, easily see the ones that I, I can keep and the ones that I can delete. So what you see here is uh, a culled version. Uh, I'm going to probably end up deleting a few of these. And I thought what I'd do is show you a processing, uh, the way I process my images, uh, I should say. So, well, let's try this one here, for example. That's uh, the file number is 0486 so if I now go to Photoshop and look for that file 0486 and that's the one there so I can open the image now in Photoshop and this is where 
I start processing it, the first thing I tend to do is remove any chromatic aberration and apply any profile corrections. You'll notice it's recognized that I was using a Sony uh, camera with a 200-600mm lens. And if I move up a little bit, it, the overall feeling of this image is it's a little bit on the cool side. So it's got a temperature at the moment of 3,700. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit. You'll notice that there's a lovely diffuse background. Now, this image was shot at 4,000 ISO, that's uh, aperture of f9, and 640 of, 640th of a second using manual, uh, manual exposure uh, in the camera. So at this point, I've done all I need to do there. I'm going to just click open. I don't think I need to use any highlight slider, but we'll bring that down a touch. Yeah, it does, just lower it a little bit. Just it does help. There's no obvious shadows to deal with here. So I'm going to open this image now and put it into Photoshop. Um, so there are various different ways you can um, carry on from here. I think that's probably enough at the moment. Now, the next step to do for me on this image is to get rid of some of this noise. If I uh, zoom in to 200 percent, you can see the noise, the digital noise around here. So uh, if I move the bird around, you can see quite clearly evidence of digital noise in the background. Now, recently, over the last year or so, uh, I've um, invested in a program called Topaz. By the way, I'm just going to change this, these pixel sizes to 6,000 by 4,000. Uh, but anyway, I've used a program called Topaz Denoise AI, which does a fantastic job of getting rid of this noise without really affecting the quality of the bird uh, that I'm uh, concentrating on. So the way I find that is to come down to Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise AI. So this is all being done in real time, just to give you an idea about how long this process lasts. Now, at the moment, it's generating a preview once it's done that, I'll bring the uh, I, the space for showing the bird's head higher. And you can see the difference between the two here. This is, oops, I've just tapped that inadvertently. So on the left-hand side of this line is the unprocessed image as far as Topaz is concerned. And to the right is the processed version. And you can see instantly, I hope, the difference between the two. So now I've, this is set on auto. All I need to do now is press apply. And it takes uh, probably a minute, 60, 80 seconds, something like that, to go through, probably a bit less actually on this image, to get rid of the digital noise. And, um, this, you know, the, the, this is a fairly time consuming process, but believe me, the results are worth it. Uh, and the other thing to say is that if you have several images which have very been taken under similar conditions, similar ISO, similar light conditions, then there is a, a batch processing ability with Denoise AI, which does, uh, you know, so you, while that's going on, 10 or 15 images perhaps you've got time to go and make yourself a cup of tea or whatever so we're two-thirds of the way through at the moment this is a 24 megapixel image remember so uh, it does take some time I've got a reasonably uh, fast computer so you may find it a little bit slower if you've got a slower computer or a bit faster if you've got a faster one so we're coming up to hundred percent now there we go. And hopefully you can see the, the, the improvement there. So I'm just going to bring that to fit on screen. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to crop that a little bit just to give us a bit of an idea. So obviously this is the blue tit on the feeder. Um, yeah, I mean the blue tit shown reasonably well. I like the background. I've got a bit of a smudge here. I think that must be a dust spot on my, uh, my um, sensor. So I'm just going to delete that. You know, the thing is, there's a little bit of white here which catches the eye. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to, you know, this is really being very, very picky. But you can see that um, white spot at the end of the bird's beak there, which is a bit of seed. So I'm just going to get rid of that with a cloak. Oops, that didn't work as intended. Um, I might need to just zoom in a, zoom in a little bit more. just to get rid of that. And there's several different ways of doing that. So here I'm just going to use edit fill and 
content aware see if that makes that does make a better job so if i go back now to fit on screen the bird's beak looks a little bit better and so there we are now this is um, saved at six by six thousand by four thousand pixels now depending on what your use for this is you might want to put a border on it if you're going to send it to the web you'd certainly want to have it in a lot smaller than it is so whoops uh that's clever isn't it so let me get rid of that I didn't want the lasso. So that's one of the images I took with the bird at a feeder. And they're reasonable, uh, you know, it's a reasonable sort of image. You know, you might might be well pleased with that. But for me, I think we can make a better, better result of that by using the perch. So I'm going to get out of this image now. And what I'll do, I will save that image mode. I'll save it to my desktop. There we go. So that's saved. And now I'll close out of there and go on to back to Photo Mechanic to find an image of the birds on the perch. OK, so so much for that image. So what I'd like to do now is process another one, but this time with the birds on the perch that we were, were set up for them. So here we go. This is image number 044 five so if i now go to photoshop i can open that image zero zero four five five four four five here we go and there's a great amount of interaction between these two birds and obviously birds at a feeder station in the winter there's a lot of rivalry for food so the processing will be very similar to the last one so first things first i've re removed the chromatic aberration and applied the profile correction to the image for the camera and the lens i was using as per the previous image so now i'm going to slide up and just adjust the exposure it's important not to blow the whites of the cheeks of these birds out when you're photographing so this one's a little bit underexposed so it just needs a little bit of help bringing that out and also reducing the blacks and the shadows um, i'm just going to tone the bring the temperature down a little bit and lighten that a little bit more i like the the action between these two birds and the fact that this bird is also looking at the camera what you have here is a piece of the lichen that's been displaced by the bird. That's a dangly bit of lichen I'm not too happy with, so we can correct that in a moment. So I'm um, just point out this one was taken at an ISO of 400, a lot less than the 4000 on the previous shot. Uh, it's got a, an aperture of f9 and 640th of a second as, for, as per the previous shot. Uh, the sun was clearly a lot brighter at this point in the day when I took this photograph so now I'm going to open the image and because it was using a much lower ISO I'm not going to apply any topaz denoise here because you know you really need to zoom in 200% to, to, to be bothered by any noise on this image what I will do though I'll zoom in at a hundred percent just to tidy the image up so I'll use my lasso tool here just to go around there. Now I've got to edit, fill, content aware, fill, click OK, and that should make a good job of that. And here I'm just going to use the healing brush to get rid of some of these minor aberrations, if you like. And again, the lasso to outline this. Several different ways you can do this. So edit, fill, content aware fill again hopefully that will do a good job yeah so i'm quite happy with that so let's view that uh, at full screen size again so yeah what i'm going to do is having said i'm not going to apply topaz i will in uh, in this case actually so i'm going to filter topaz labs not so much for the noise but for a little bit of sharpening that this uh, program will deliver so uh, if i now click apply as i say it's on auto as it was in the previous image um, i know there shouldn't be too much noise but there will be a little bit of sharpening applied uh, and that i think is going to help uh, this image overall you just got to wait for it to churn through the process
So I'm going to stop here and I'll come back when the process has been completed. Okay, so here we are. Um, this has got rid of the noise and it's given us a little bit more sharpening on both of the birds. So now the only thing I want to do here is again just crop it a little bit. One of the things you can do here with this image because the edge of the branch is a reasonable distance away from this bird is to bring in the crop so that you can actually um, give the impression that the branch goes right across the frame. So if I do that, and we've got that as an image now, I'll move that out of the way. And you'll notice, hopefully, how attractive this branch is. And it's, they're so easy to find in, in the wild when you're just wandering around the countryside. And it just enhances things enormously, rather than seeing a bird like a blue tit on a bird feeder. I like the background in, in, in this as well. It's another soft background. There's plenty of space around the bird, both top and bottom, left and right. And there's nothing distracting in the background to distract us our eyes away from the birds. Right, um, it's worth pointing out that you should try and keep these sessions short in the winter time particularly because obviously birds are habituated to coming to the feed uh, and so I tend to be doing this for no longer than say an hour at a time and at that point I will put all the feeders back so that the birds are able to carry on feeding as per normal. Well, that brings me to the end of uh, this presentation, and I hope it's been useful for you to watch and you've learned something. Um, I'd be very happy to see any of your comments on the channel, and I'll be able to respond to them as and when they appear. Also, you can contact me via my website. The address for that is wildlifeontheweb.co.uk. Well, that's it for now, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next presentation. Bye-bye.